In 1992, an astonishing event occurred involving a miraculous rescue. The Eagle's Nest Wilderness Area, found in the Colorado Rocky Mountains National Forest, is a rugged and beautiful region, but also notorious for its unpredictable and dangerous changes in weather. The climate conditions can switch dramatically, particularly when trekking above 10,000 feet. This is when a storm can suddenly move in from some distance away. In 1992, Derek Patton and his young son Ryan were visiting the mountain for a day of hunting, but at some stage during the morning, the pair had become separated. As Derek searched over hours, temperatures fell and the dad feared for his son's safety. The boy had been dressed in only light summer clothing and needed to be found that day. Derek left the area at 3pm to fetch local rangers to help in his search for Ryan. The rescue team of Patty and Dan Burnett were called in by the local sheriff's department and arrived bringing their search dog Hasty and some warm clothing. They and Derek were terrified by the threat of hypothermia as evening set in. In that terrain and altitude, people can perish from hypothermia even in summer. This involves a person's body temperature dropping by a few degrees, with eventually the body shutting down, causing death. There was also a lot of potentially dangerous wildlife in the area. After hours of determined searching, there were still no signs of Ryan, and concerningly, snow began to fall. The searchers could only hope that he had found a confined spot to shelter in, but had to call off the search for that night due to deteriorating weather conditions. The next morning, another local searcher, Greta Sloan, and her Alsatian dog Cello joined the search party. Cello ran ahead and located Ryan, who was in a dangerous state of hypothermia. The rescuers gave him water and food while feeling that there was no earthly explanation how Ryan had survived such a tough night. Strangely, there were two patches of melted snow near him which caught Greta's attention. Ryan later described his ordeal when, by night time, his throat was sore from shouting for help and he decided he needed to rest. Terrified, alone and freezing, in pitch blackness, Ryan knew he needed to find shelter and sought out some trees. There was a fir tree where the branches drooped almost to the ground, so he climbed underneath them, trying to arrange as much cover as he could. The exhausted boy fell asleep, but sometime in the middle of the night, a strange sound awoke him, and he realised that there were two large wild elk nearby. He shouted at them and tried throwing sticks and pine cones to shoo them away, but they kept coming back, and every time they returned, they approached closer and closer. Finally, they did something astonishing that seems to go against the nature of wild animals. They lay down on either side of the boy and stayed there with him throughout the night. They lay close enough to Ryan all night to keep him warm, and experienced Bushy Greta was convinced that that was how he had survived. Other rescuers were sceptical of Ryan's story until they viewed the spot where he had lain all night. They spotted the elk tracks nearby and observed that there were two large thawed patches where the two animals had bedded down on either side of the boy. It was commented that Ryan would have died of cold overnight if it wasn't for the heat source of the two large animals lying either side of him. Greta believed his account because she said it would have been completely impossible for him to have survived the night if it were not true. The elk were obviously not concerned that Ryan was from a different species. All they could see was another living being in need of help. The incident highlights apparent feelings of empathy and altruism in our furry and perhaps not so furry friends. According to filmmaker and writer Tom Mustel, many mammalian species are capable of such complex emotions and behaviours. In 2015, he and a friend were kayaking on Monterey Bay in California. 
After a couple of hours of sightseeing, the pair were heading back to shore when suddenly the water nearby parted as a massive adult whale shot upwards then fell. The kayak capsized and the pair were submerged. Later on the dock, still trembling from the life-threatening event, their instructor informed them that their close encounter had never occurred there before, in 30 years of operation. But when a video of the incident appeared online two days later, it posed the question of whether the whale had breached above them so dangerously, on purpose. Tom later consulted with Professor Joy Reidenberg at the Arkan School of Medicine of Mount Sinai in New York, a whale specialist with whom he had previously worked. She told him that his 30-ton humpback whale had done an unusual pivot mid-breach, which could indicate that it was suddenly surprised by the kayaker's presence. It was as if the mammal had breached and then suddenly spotted them. The strange turn it had done allowed it to land a softer part of its body next to them to cause less damage, as opposed to a body slam using the bone of the skull which might be employed while fighting. Reidenberg's opinion was that the pair survived because the whale cared about trying not to hit them. On looking back, Tom studied a photo of the whale landing which appears to back up her theory. He could see that as the whale turned above them, it would have looked down upon their craft. It managed to avoid crushing them as it fell or injuring them in the water and it swam away very slowly. The encounter inspired Tom to further explore the capacity of whales for complex behaviours such as altruism and emotions like grief and empathy. Marine mammals such as whales and dolphins share specific brain neurons with humans which are involved in socialising intuition, emotions and judgement. It's known that whales sing, sometimes very long pieces of music, identify themselves and communicate extensively with each other. And as an example, an orca whale whose offspring has died is known to carry around the calf's dead body for weeks afterwards, as if in a state of mourning. Now, pattern-finding artificial intelligence tools are being used by at least five research teams to piece together the languages of many species. This is developing a kind of Google Translate for animals, whereby we could perceive an animal's thoughts and perhaps be able to communicate with them. The scientists are using machine learning algorithms to analyse the calls of elephants, rodents, lemurs, whales, chickens, pigs, bats, cats and other species. The research involves matching masses of vocal recordings with the visual social behaviours of animals. The Imperial College London team, working on decoding and engaging in sperm whale communication, plans to be speaking to sperm whales by 2026. Researcher Michael Bronstein believes that we can't assume that Homo sapiens is the only intelligent and sentient creature on the planet, particularly given that sperm whales possess the largest brains in the animal kingdom, six times the size of our own. He thinks we may discover that there is an entire civilization existing basically under our noses, which begs the intriguing question, if and when we can converse with animals, what will we find out?